G'day Cheeky Dogs! Today we're going to be breaking down the Bluey episode Trades. This episode of Bluey is called Trades. The most Australian episode I have ever seen of Bluey. It is incredible the amount of stuff in this to the point where I'm actually going to make two videos about it. So this one is going to be breaking down all like the hidden Easter eggs, the little tiny details that maybe you might have missed, all the Australian references. But the other video is going to be talking about all like the throwbacks to previous Bluey episodes. So I'll have that video out a little bit later. You're the one who wanted a gun! Oh yeah, that's true. I want to put it in a fish pond. Oh. Boo! Save our stuff! They're tradies. They're putting in a fish pond. But if you want to see that video, plus any other Bluey videos that I release, don't forget to hit that like button down below, as well as that subscribe button, and that bell for notifications so you know when I release those videos. But let's get into the episode, tradies. Let's roll the intro. G'day cheeky dogs, my name's Monkey and I'm an Australian currently living in America. And we're gonna start off talking about all the Aussie slang in this. Who are they? And why are they painting our grass? They're tradies. Now, of course, the title is tradies, which is the Aussie slang for tradesmen. We have lots of nicknames for different tradies in our country as well, but more specifically, two of them being Sparky and Chippy. Chippy is a carpenter in Australia, whereas Sparky is the nickname for an electrician. We also have more Aussie slang from Sparky when he calls the girls little tackers, which is the Aussie word for children. <laughs> little tackers. We also hear him saying me misses, which in Australia sometimes we'll say me instead of my and misses is in like misses, my wife, so. Someone called me misses won't let him. My wife, me misses, very like Aussie Aussie language. Me misses. Fellas, of course, which means men. Thanks fellas. Jules, which is Sparky's wife, which is definitely a nickname for Julia. Oh, me misses, you mean Jules, she's my wife. We really don't use our full names ever in Australia. It's constantly nicknames, like even for me, Margie is a nickname. And of course, the two swear words that not only Sparky uses, but we also find out that both Chili and Bandit use as well. Then Big Belt called chocolate milk that word Dad said when the mama didn't start. Oh dear. Call them the word you said when the dishwasher broke. Oh dear. I definitely think the one that maybe Chili used might have been referenced before in the episode Muffin Cone. See you next Thursday. So if you understand, you understand, but I'm just going to leave it there. Now, let's talk about Sparky and all the details we know about him. So he is a Mastiff as his character design. He's also the first Bluey character that has a bum crack, which we actually got to see, which is kind of funny because again, it's that like stereotype of tradies with the plumber's crack. He's also voiced by Mick Malloy, who's a famous Australian comedian, most notably known for his work on The Late Show. And Joe Brum even references that like he wanted to use lines from The Late Show, most specifically for the line, not here for a haircut. I'm not here for a haircut, Tommy. <laughs> Oi, back to work. Not here for a haircut, Chippy. I also love that we see the continuity here. Sparky fixes the mailbox that Bingo knocked down in the episode onesies. I guess we'll go back to being enemies now. Um, yeah. And of course, his nickname in this episode is Big Belt because he wears a big belt. And I also think the reason that they're wearing clothing in this is because one, safety reasons, but also it's protecting their fur from getting too dirty. So it's like a logical thing why they're wearing outfits in this. Now let's talk about Chippy as well because his design had a few people confused. Some people thought that he was a Borzoi, but Alice Walsh actually confirmed that his designer was Costa Kassab and that he is also an Afghan hound. I didn't say that. Okay, I did say that, but I didn't mean it, babe. He is voiced by Sam Cotton, who is also an Australian comedian, most notably known for his social media content about seagulls and chippies. He even has a book called Chippy Chases, and the number plate as well of Chippy's car is seagulls. Again, just tying into Sam Cotton about seagulls and chippies and the character called Chippy. Just a perfect marriage of like voice actor and character. Chippy also has a cherry tattoo, which is a nod to his girlfriend, whose name is Cherry. It's a girl called Cherry. Oh. He also has a tiger tattoo, which is a nod to the Brisbane Tigers rugby team. And his phone case is also the Brisbane Broncos rugby team logo and colors as well. So we can tell that he really, really loves rugby. Also, his nickname is Chocolate Milk, which is a massive stereotype for tradies in Australia. So the idea is that like the tradies breakfast is a iced coffee or chocolate milk and a meat pie. We see meat pies later on in this episode as well. Of course they use chocolate milk because that's a little bit more kid friendly. Chocolate milk? Ah, oh, you mean chippy. Now, speaking of treaty stereotypes, they do, I think, show a lot of them and then also try to subvert it as well. So, of course, the stereotype of, like, them saying it'll take so long, but actually it takes, like, twice as long. And you're sure it will only take three days? Yeah, three or four. Is it three or is it four? But in this episode, it didn't. So, subverting that stereotype. Again, like I said, their love for, like, iced coffee and chocolate milk, which, yes, they did show. You're kidding. Oh! oh. 
And of course, the fact that they all drive utes and they have like specific music that they love to listen to. And I really kind of loved how they did that because it just felt like home. It felt like Australia. And we're going to talk more about those utes as well. So Sparky's car is a old beat up Hilux. The number plate is SPK PLG, which of course stands for spark plug. And his car has the long dog in it. It's a little yellow one hanging off the mirror inside of the cabin. And the music that we hear playing when he rocks up is like that very typical like 80s kind of rock music. <laughs> which contrasts really well with Chippy's car because when he rocks up, he's got more of like 2000s dance techno type music. And who's that? Now we also got confirmation from Costa Kasab as well that the type of ute that Chippy has is a mashup between two very iconic Australian cars and those being the AU Falcon and the Holden Lime Green Ute as well. And I cannot stress enough, this Lime Green Ute is like the most iconic tradies car, especially for like millennials and younger kind of generation. Like all of them have that car, whereas the older generation usually tend to have that more white Hilux type ute. Although it is interesting though, because Chippy never drives his car, only his girlfriend Cherry does. And we do kind of find out why, but let's talk about Cherry. So we we found out from Alice Walsh again over on her Twitter account that she is a red Saluki and this also means that they are the third mixed breed couple in Bluey. Now we see her driving the car and we assume though that it is Chippy's but that he can't drive because he lost his license from a DUI or drinking under the influence of alcohol. And we see this because of the chalk drawings that the girls are doing under the house. We can see a little like mug of beer and the huge like crossed out and the races. So it's kind of like a bit of an assumption as to why he's not allowed to drive it. They even say that he can't drive it. And chocolate milk isn't allowed to drive his car. And again, that's very stereotypical of like young tradies getting really excited, getting like these big V8 cars and losing their licenses because they're drinking and driving at the same time. So it was kind of funny that they added that into it. Also, let's talk about those chalk drawings because there's two sets. There's the one underneath the house on the stump, which yes, Queenslanders are usually like raised up high. So it is very normal for kids to like be playing underneath there. I did that myself as a kid, but we have the set there about like what's happening during the show, but also another set out the front on the front path that the girls were drawing when they first rocked up. And there's Easter eggs in both of them. So let's start with the ones on the front part. We can see Tina spelled out the T INA, as well as a giant dog with like kind of smelly green teeth, which we can assume is Tina. We can also see unicorns. We can see a rainbow, which might be a reference to rain. We see the rocket ship with a sun and a moon, which is a reference to the episode Escape. And we see little dog bones as well. And of course those paw prints at the front and the sidewalk. So really cool little extra details. There are a few other in there, but I couldn't really quite tell what they were, but those ones were the most distinct ones. <laughs> so let's look at then at the chalk drawings that were underneath the house. So like I mentioned, we see the racehorse with the beer and the green ute all crossed out, which most likely means that yes, Chippy got a DUI. We also see Sparky with pies, which we know he's not allowed to eat, an apple, which he is allowed to eat, his boat, as well as fishing, which he was talking about around the girls. It just needs the hull fixed up and a new output. All he does is talk about his boat. We also see Chippy and Cherry who are fighting, again, replicating what's happening in this episode. We see Chippy's cherry tattoo, as well as his tiger tattoo and the rugby ball, again, showing us that the tiger is related to the rugby club. We see two little kids barking, which could either be Bluey and Bingo, or maybe they are Sparky's kids. We see the toad that they threw at each other outside when they were building the fish pond. Chocolate milk found a dead toad and threw it at Big Belt. And then we also see a woman yelling who could maybe be Jules, but I think it's probably the ice cream lady because it looks like she's holding an ice cream cone. So speaking of ice cream, we do have the return of the ice cream lady from the episode Ice Cream. She's also still voiced by Lee Sales, who is a famous Australian journalist. We also hear the green sleeves music pop in again. <gasps> ice cream? Ice cream. Ice cream! And it's lovely to see that the girls learnt their lesson from that episode. They learnt how to share their ice cream as well. Now, going from outside into inside, let's have a look at Bandit's study slash office. And when Chili's there on the computer, it is quite funny some of the Easter eggs that we can see. It looks like she's using Windows XP based off the background of it. And whilst she's meant to be working, it kind of also looks like she's just scrolling on Facebook as well. We do of course have a lot of archeological kind of Easter eggs hidden in here. I love them also to do with Joe Brum, the creator of Bluey's older brother, Adam Brum, who is an archeologist who Bandit's job of course is based off. So a lot of these come from around this sort of Asian Pacific area, specifically Indonesia. But we do see a mask on the wall, which looks a lot like the PNG kind of mask. Mask. We see the Sulawesi pig painting, which is like one of the earliest paintings ever found. I think it's like 45,500 years old and Adam Brum was one of the people who wrote about this. We see a dog holding a tiger, which kind of gives very Calvin and Hobbes vibes. And we've seen this picture before in the archeology span short. We also see dog hieroglyphics showing us that dogs do exist in Egypt and in the past.
mask. We see little paw print kind of hieroglyphics as well and bone ones too. And then we also see like a statue on the ground, which is very much the Indonesian megaliths, just without the more like anatomical kind of structures on them. And then a sword hanging on the wall as well, which could be from anywhere. One of the funny like dog jokes though, of course, is like when the girls first see the tradies and it's very typical of like dogs not seeing someone they know. So they're barking at them, but they don't go away. So they run away. And that's exactly what Bluey and Bingo did. Enemies, bark at them. <laughs> We see, of course, them change their attitudes about them being their enemies. And this is like perfectly shown in the cockatoo weather vane that's on top of the roof, where it all of a sudden changes directions, kind of signifying how the girls have changed their mind about how they feel about the characters and the tradies. Baby! Now this episode is also eight minutes long. It's one of the longer episodes with Pass the Parcel also being a longer one from season three as well. And I'm so glad it is because I absolutely love it. Five out of five long dogs again. What a surprise. I absolutely love all these season three B episodes so, so, so much. So cheeky dogs, let me know down below how many long dogs would you give this episode as well as what was your favorite Easter egg too? Like I mentioned, I will have another breakdown about this coming out later, but I also have breakdowns for every single episode of season three B. So if you wanna make sure that you can watch them, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below as well as that bell for notifications so you know when those videos come out. But until then, I have picked you cheeky dogs out a few other videos that maybe you would like to watch and I will see you all in another video. Bye.